So Aaron O'Toole continues to amaze me, becoming the first ever politician in modern memory to lose momentum after his own political convention. That's pretty amazing considering he already had negative momentum going into it as Justin Trudeau's popularity is declining with the results of his pandemic failures across the aisle. Somehow Aaron O'Toole is underwater by nine points. How does this happen? And I think the great example is Aaron O'Toole just put on a masterclass in shooting yourself in the foot vis-a-vis -vis his climate change resolution uh, to the members which got voted down in a horribly embarrassing fashion that he then used to weaponize against his own base because there seems to be nothing Aaron O'Toole enjoys more than alienating the conservative base and attacking them or providing ammunition to the media party which hates him to attack the conservative base who they seem to hate more than him who he seems to hate more than I, I don't even understand any of this at this point and, and what's going through Aaron O'Toole's head so this needs a bit of a breakdown Right. And a full breakdown will be given tonight on TNT Live is why Claypool and I will go over everything with the Conservative Convention as why it was actually on the inside. Uh, and you'll learn everything going on there in, in far more detail. But the climate change stuff is very fascinating here because that what was trending on Twitter, right? A conservative base, uh, conservatives, right? Don't believe climate change is real and don't want to do anything about it, which isn't true. Right? What Aaron O'Toole did is essentially it's the pork barreling tactic is the first two lines of the resolution were basically climate change is real and we must take action on it. That was a gun he put to the head of the conservative party member saying, if you don't vote for the rest of what I want to do on climate action, then the media will pillory you and it will, you'll be your fault. So he put a gun to the base's head and said, you must vote for this and do as I say. And they said, no. Why? Well, because of the rest of it. Now, the rest of it is, is seemingly innocuous at, at the surface, but in order to understand Aaron O'Toole's climate policies, you have to look at Aaron O'Toole's climate policy. So when Aaron O'Toole says, I will repeal the Trudeau carbon tax, this is one of those fact, tech, fact check technically true, um, however horribly misleading. He still wants to do carbon pricing. So carbon pricing is the carbon tax. So it, so Justin Trudeau put in a carbon tax for carbon pricing, which is carbon pricing. Aaron O'Toole is for carbon pricing, but against the carbon tax, right? So essentially he's for the carbon tax, but he just wants to repeal it, reinstitute it, and then give it a new name. So it's not the carbon tax and a few people will be fooled. So Aaron O'Toole has been very pro carbon pricing. Uh, even Harper, uh, sorry, McLean's magazine talked about his inner circle, which is the Patrick Brown holdovers. They mentioned Dan Robertson, Wally Solomon as carbon tax activists uh, under Patrick Brown, who are now in O'Toole's team. So O'Toole, and I've been covering this from the beginning, has been a very, very, very strong um, proponent of carbon pricing, carbon taxing, basically this nonsense um, that, that we call green energy and all that. Now, why is that? I've always thought politicians love the carbon tax and green energy scams because green energy is a great way to, uh, to perform a wealth transfer and a wealth transfer from the working class to the Fortune 500 companies. That's what happened in Ontario. And if you don't understand Air Ontario's green energy plan, don't worry, that's now Canada's national green energy plan. Those who designed Air Ontario's green energy plan, like Gerald Butts, those that didn't go to jail for the gas plant scandal, uh, went into the federal government. So. What happened in Ontario, which made Kathleen Wynne so unpopular, Justin Trudeau is now doing, and it's going to make him unpopular in a few years. But don't worry, um, the Conservatives will continue to do this um, and destroy the Canadian economy. Now, no one is saying that there aren't real environmental, ecological problems that need to be dealt with that affect, you know, air quality and quality of life and, 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 and habitats and, and sort of everything, right? But the problem that the majority of the Conservative movement has is you're seen, what, what, what the left does and the, and the corporations and the elites will call it whatever it is, you know, the green energy lobbyists, they do is they, they barrel up every single environmental issue, every single one, they put it in one ball, it's all called climate change, and what will solve this entire thing is this one policy they're proposing. If you don't back this policy, you don't believe in science, right? So I've talked about how climate is such a very complicated thing and we really need some nuance here. However, the, the fix to all our climate issues is this univariate analysis called carbon emissions and bringing down carbon emissions will save the planet, bringing them up will destroy the planet. It's very, very, very simple. And if you don't believe that climate science is incredibly simple and can be solved by one univariate issue, then you don't believe in science. Now, you also probably understand science. You know, that's, that's a bit nonsensical, but welcome to 2021. 
So this is what the people are, are mad about at Artula. It was one, he put a gun to their head, and a lot of conservatives didn't like that. Two, this isn't a conservative policy. And three, you have Aaron O'Toole pulling a, I am the captain now, look at me, right? Basically, I'm ignoring the conservative base, we're going forward anyway, because he doesn't want to be slammed by the media, and he wants to be seen as pr pr progressive. And I've talked about, we can talk about how this is based off flawed polling data, how the conservatives don't understand the modern world, and blah, 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 blah. And not the cons like the conservative party insiders. They, they, as I've said, they are dogmatically, religiously, zealously fixated on the fact that it is the year 2006 and it never will not be the year 2006. And they have a playbook and Stephen Harper won the election, you know, back in the early 2000s. So this is how the world is from now on. What is Twitter? What is Instagram? What is, what is the modern world? We don't understand. It doesn't exist. Um, so... Aaron O'Toole tries to push forward more green energy nonsense, which is just ways to, maybe he doesn't want to enrich the Justin Trudeau insiders, the people who are giving Trudeau money. Maybe he wants to enrich the people who are giving him money. whoop de doo conservatism. Right, but now what he's done is he's basically thrown his base under the bus again because they stood up to him. So he's going with to the media of like, no, 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 I'm the great climate czar. And listen, do you think the conservative base is going to like a conservative party leaders? Why is Catherine McKenna and Green uh, Green Party former leader Elizabeth destroy the get rid of the entire uh, fossil fuels industry? May R entire she wants the entire thing gone. They're now praising Aaron O'Toole and his great climate change because they see Aaron O'Toole is a great tool, right? for attacking conservatives. That's what Aaron O'Toole's been done. Aaron O'Toole has done more to undermine the conservative movement than anyone in all of Canadian history. It's really amazing. Um, again, going into his convention, he was trailing a very unpopular prime minister by nine points. Uh, Justin Trudeau's getting un more unpopular by the day. But you know who's getting un more unpopular at a faster rate than Justin Trudeau? It's Aaron O'Toole. <sighs> Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. And by the way, the green energy policies in Ontario, they increased emissions by 50%. Made pr prices wrap massively. People in rural Ontario paying over $1,000 a month for hydro. And emissions increased because these policies are so effing dumb and, and, and counterfactual, but they're just protected by this fear of green energy. It's nonsense. It's not conservatism. And the reason why the conservative base hates Aaron O'Toole at this point, or doesn't like him, or doesn't want to get behind him, is because Aaron O'Toole is actively at war with conservative ideology. There is nothing even remotely conservative about the guy. And you see this now in the new marketing slogan. After the, after the, after the convention, the party's new slogan is, stand with Aaron. Not, this is what we'll do for you, you know, you know less corruption, you know, brighter future, financial... Nope, just... For, for the love of God, please support Aaron because there's really no other reason to vote conservative at this point because we're not doing conservatism. We're just not Justin Trudeau. So please, please vote for us. It's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. Good thing Pierre Polyev was, didn't run or Ronna Ambrose or any actual conservatives. That way we would be winning. And who needs that? 